question and either say the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the prince of Judah, the priests, the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nation and polluting the Lord's temple which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their father, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of the God. Despite his warning and scoff at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against the people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their images burned the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, and set all the palaces of fire, and destroyed all his precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of Shelly and his son, until the kingdom of the Persian of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land had retrieved its lost Sabbath during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the words of the Lord spoken to Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout the kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belong to any part of his people, let him go up, and may the, his God be with him. Sisters and brothers, the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when, he, when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By Christ, you have been saved. Raised up with him, seated with him in the heavens is Jesus Christ. That is the age to come. He might show the immeasurable riches of his grace to his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works. So no one may boast. For we are his handwork. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. That God has prepared in advance that we shall live in him. My sisters and brothers, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
They will be seated. And those following the back of the phone, uh, please try to remember to mute your phone so that you know, we will not be hearing background noise. Uh, the theme for the homily today is death and transgression, but saved by the mercy of God. Death and transgression was saved by the mercy of God. How many of us got the, phone, the, the email of this homily? You know, I mean, okay, well, a few, not doesn't seem all. But the summary is that there was sin in the world. But God did not keep quiet, hold his hand. He did something. God did something. And what he did, you see, on the cross. So, death and sin was raised to life in Christ. And the summary we can see also on the cross is where the Lord said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So we see the mercy of God in action. So the, the details about the family is that um, looking at the, you know, the first reading uh, from Second Chronicles is the story of, of the sin, captivity, and liberation of the people of Israel. Is a mirror of the story of all humanity. Because all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. But the Lord did not abandon us to the powers of death. He came to our rescue. He sent his only begotten Son. And the scripture sums it up beautifully. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him might not perish, but might have life eternal. John 3.16. Now there was a story of a man told in the first reading, uh, the man called Cyrus. Cyrus was king of Asia. That man was a kind of a prototype an image of Christ. Because what he did, <coughs> people who were enslaved, put in exile, he set them free. He told them, go home to your land and help them to rebuild their city and the temple of God. So, bringing man back from the self-inflicted exile, Cost the Son of God something. He gave his life on the cross for it. And you might notice that our lengthy liturgical readings are gradually leading up to that, to Good Friday and then to Easter. You remember last Sunday when the Lord said, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rebuild it. But the temple was the temple of his body. We see the same thing in the gospel today when he said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent, the bronze serpent, so will the Son of Man be lifted up. So that whoever believes in him will be saved. So what do we see in that? What is the lifting up? of the Son of Man. It is his death on the cross. Where he also said, when I am lifted up, I'm going to draw all men to myself. Now, the image our Lord used in talking to, in, uh, to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, Sir Henry, uh, as we read in the Gospel today, came to the Lord in the night. He didn't want to be seen. And the Lord told him that no one can enter the kingdom unless the person is born anew, is born from above, is born again. And the man is understanding the 
saying, how can somebody enter into the womb again? For St. Augustine said, there are two births, and they are not repeated. The biological birth and the supernatural birth. The biological birth is the birth, you know, each one of us had from our parents, and the supernatural is the baptism. And baptism is not repeated, they are complete. Each birth is complete. So, anyway, in the course of explaining to him that one has to be born of water and the Holy Spirit, and where is that coming from? The water and the Holy Spirit came from the cross. Because as he was crucified and his side was opened, blood and water gushed forth, symbolizing the shaking, the baptism, and the Eucharist. Now, they begin to what I say. Maybe we're going to stop this sometime. So anyway, <laughs> but the Lord, in explaining to Nicodemus, he said, just as the bronze serpent was cast out. You remember that story? The giant, the giant of the chosen people to from his land. And by the way, when we say chosen people, don't count yourself off. We are chosen in Christ. All of us. <clears throat> the uh, Israelites of old are like the representative of the rest of humanity. They are like conduits through which the Lord passes blessing. But that image of the bronze serpent being mounted, now the people, in the course of their journey, their patience wore out and they began to complain and threaten that they, they rebel. Well, there was a rebellion. They want to go back to the land where they were slaves. They want to go back to Egypt. And now, so they want to go back to Egypt. And uh, what happened? Sin has its logic. The logic of sin is that it, it brings disorders. When we rebel against God, we cause chaos in our life and in the lack of orders. So because the rebel, the serpent, the, 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 the desert serpent, that we are living on their own and just going about their own business, they turned and began to attack them. And they were poisonous. Once bitten, the person dies. And now there was repentance. They cried out. Say, we have sinned. Save us, O Lord. And that is something so powerful that everybody has to remember. When you have sinned, don't carry the burden alone. Call out to the Lord. Ask his forgiveness. So they did. And Moses, uh, the Lord said to Moses to make a bronze serpent, the, the image of that animal that bites them and mount them up, and mount it up on the pole. So that when one who is beaten looks at teeth, the person gets well. He will not die. He will restore him back to heaven. So, what do we see there? Now, it's something so uniquely human as well that sometimes when you look at your problem in the face, they lose its power. You know, it's like the things that are done in the spiritual direction. You are having a lot of nagging problems, spiritual problems, and you're thinking even of committing suicide. <clears throat> and you went to the spiritual director, and, and, and you lay it out there. That is also the principle of psychotherapy, or counseling in the days, when people are able to talk about what is plaguing them inside. And then, when you look at it, then the problem diminishes itself. So when they were able to look at that bronze serpent, the, the, mess, the thing that attacked them, the Lord used it to heal them. But that was an image of something greater 
of the Lord. The serpent has beaten all of humanity, you know, by leading us astray in sin. But what the Lord did on the cross, letting himself be mounted there. When we look at that, what do we see? We see the destructive power of sin. But that is not all. That is not the whole message. The other thing we see on the cross is the mercy of God that is wider than the wideness of ocean. The mercy of God that is greater than our sins. Because he took on that guilt. So that is what the Lord did for us on the cross. And that is how we mirror that round serpent. Now, what is the message we need to take to Paul? You know, saying the Lord came to save us. What is the message we need to take to Paul and live by it? It is to live the truth and never prefer darkness. Once liberated, don't go back to the bonds. It's not to you. No, don't go back to Egypt. Walk in the light. And how can we live the truth? It is to put our trust in Him who was lifted up on the cross for us. And he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. So in other words, what we need is in Jesus. See? And so we conclude with the prayer to the merciful Lord. You inspired Jesus, but the source of life got forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. Amen. Amen. May we rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God.
that the church will lead us a lengthened journey with heart and mind renewed, so we may enter more fully into the mysteries of our redemption. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that all church leaders will be sources of grace and inspiration for the people of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that national and world leaders will have the wisdom to discern what is best for their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord that God who sent his son to save and not to condemn will touch the hearts of all who had abortions and bring them the gift of repentance, forgiveness, and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are preparing for baptism and reception into the church this Easter, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the sick may be healed and that those who have died may be granted a home in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord will grant us success in all our endeavors. And also, in a, I will build my church project and the Catholic appeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who are sick, for their healing. For those who are of our community who are in hospitals, in nursing homes, or recovering at home. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the end to this coronavirus pandemic, we pray to the Lord. For what else shall we pray? For his divine and high spirit to this us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayers. Let us pray for all those people that are suffering from domestic violence or anything. Turn to God and know that there is a way out. For this let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayers. For the homeless, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Thanksgiving for our brother Leon and for all whose birthday celebrated this month and will be celebrated. Loving Father, as we hear our prayers, grant that we may follow the life giving words of your Son, Jesus Christ, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness. 
millions of things do this in memory of me. Graciously grant peace in our days in your mercy 
Keep us free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs>
that the processes will be covered and the images will be covered and they will remain covered until uh, the Good Friday celebration and then but well, these images will remain covered till Easter Vigil. But for confession uh, in preparation, we will have to make it simple so that, because I know many of you don't live near the church, so making a second trip is really not very easy. So when you come to Mass on Sunday, uh, be prepared to do confession this coming Sunday if you want to. And it's, we will do confession after 8 a.m. Mass and then after 11 a.m. Mass. So two times. And then we will also do another one on March 26th, which is uh, Friday that we do Stations of the Cross. There will be other priests that will help. I will have about three priests. We'll start at 11 because the Mass is at noon and Stations of the Cross is at 1. So we'll start at 11 and we'll do the confession. And um, after the Stations of the Cross, we'll continue if there are anybody who wanted to do that. And the other reason for joy I wanted to share with you is one of us is turning 100 in, a, in less than a month. It's going to be 100 years old. Yeah, that was my first time of seeing someone who's 100. So and you know who that is? His boss, Lila Moore. So I would like us, I have already uh, presented it to the pastoral council, but I want us all to be you know, to be think time and think of something beautiful, memorable that we can do. Yeah, in my mind, as I think of that, I'm thinking that we can do like a video message because it's something once in a while. You don't get 100 years all the time, a century. Yeah, and it would be something that would be good to go into our archive. And one of us, Hundred years, and we celebrated it. So I might not be um, here in the U.S. during that uh, during the third day, which will be I think April 14th. I will, I will be in the motherland, you know. But if there's anything we can do beforehand that I can join, I would love to do that. So I wait for your suggestions, and you can forward them to Monty, to myself to um, carry, and then we can all coordinate that together. The last, but not the least, is that this uh, 8 a.m. Mass, we had the honor of doing the second scrutiny of one of our sisters who is entering the church, is becoming a full Catholic, and her name is Crystal Guido. So, uh, we will be having different sets of readings. If you come to Mass at 8 a.m. when she comes, it will not be exactly the same reading that we will do other Masses. Because the reading for welcoming someone into the church, for the scrutiny is different. So we'll be reading the A. So if you happen to read uh, that Mass, you know. The last, but not the least, is um, I want to give you a message from Mrs. Better me young. And you know, she and Arthur were the co chairs of the I Will Build My Church, and so far, so good. I want to thank them on behalf of all of us for, you know, for the work they did. <laughs> so, we have we nearly reached our goal, but we haven't. It is, we have about 294. Am I correct or is it 295? What do we have? It's about 296. Or 296. I
Isn't it just 4,000 remaining? Is it? To get the go. If, if we have 296, then it remains 4,000, isn't it? Right. Okay. Somebody can write one big check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the other good news I wanted to share with you is that I saw one of our sisters yesterday in the hospital and she is doing much better. She sends her greetings to you all. And that is Laura Kinsula. Mm. Yes, she's doing much better. And I spoke to Mama Gabriel. Uh, she asked me to say hello to all you all and to let you know that she's doing well. Please also pray for my mom, my mother. She was taken to the hospital uh, a few days ago, but she's doing well. I they sent me a picture. So, but uh, keep praying for her and I'll. I want to be able to see her when I go to this place. They will rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.